Good morning. I want to welcome you to Zion Lutheran Church on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost as we gather to worship our Lord and to be blessed by his grace through the hearing of his word. We begin by singing two stanzas of the hymn, O Bless the Lord, My Soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray, Lord Jesus, good shepherd of the sheep, give to us the power of your Spirit, and equip us with everything good, that we may do your will in lives that are pleasing in your sight. For you live and reign with the Father, and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Proverbs chapter 25. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. As the heavens for height and the earth for death, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put your yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great for it is better to be told come up here than to be put lower in the presence of a noble what your eyes have seen do not hastily bring into court for what will you do in the end when your neighbors put you to shame argue your case with your neighbor himself and do not reveal another secret lest he who hears you bring shame upon you and your ill repute have no end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 13. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you are also in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God, Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continue to offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. 
Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited. When he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will, will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return, and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in professing our faith with Luther's explanation of the second article. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. We continue by singing four verses of Just As I Am.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The words of our text are in the Gospel reading of St. Luke chapter 14, beginning at verse 12. Jesus said also to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return, and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. So far the text. You know, over the years, I have done a lot of weddings. I've done weddings for some of the families who are gathered here today. Um, I have a lot of nice memories of doing these weddings. I, I know one wedding I did, um, the groom went and got a different ring bearer and didn't tell the bride. And during the ceremony, the ring bearer happened to be someone named Jonathan, the husky mascot the dog, who actually came forward with the rings attached to his collar. That was interesting. You know, every wedding I've done is in interesting, whether it's outdoors, indoors, or whatever. Uh, a lot of great memories, and, and I see such a great celebration. Because when you have a wedding, you know, the, the bridesmaids are normally friends or family of the bride. The groomsmen are often friends or sometimes brothers or cousins of the groom. And everybody invited our family and friends. And sometimes there are challenges there because if, if you're doing a wedding and there's a reception for 150 people, I think the most difficult part in planning is sometimes knowing who to invite. Because you gotta go through lists and wondering, what names do you put on the list? You don't wanna leave somebody out. Sometimes you invite somebody because they invited you to a wedding. So you can't leave them out. Of course, you have to invite them to your wedding that you're doing. And sometimes you have to make some tough choices. And another thing about inviting people, you send out those invitations and sometimes you, the, the due date comes and you still haven't gotten the, the responses. So you're not sure who's coming, who's gonna say yes. And that is a really great frustration that I have seen with, with so many couples planning a wedding. Be nice if people responded. But I think that anyone planning a wedding can can avoid all of those issues, you know? You don't need to deal with those issues. Just do what Jesus tells this guy in the text. Don't invite your friends and relatives. Instead, or your rich neighbors, instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, strangers, people who cannot repay you. Now that doesn't seem to go over very well because weddings, aren't they about family and friends? And aren't they about celebrations? It would change things so much that I think things would be lost maybe as you try to celebrate without the people who matter to you in your life. What a shame. And I take these words and I wonder, what, what does Jesus expect us to do? Does he really hold us accountable when we do a banquet or a celebration? Or maybe Jesus is really directing this to the one man he's talking to, the one man who had invited him to the wedding celebration that he was attending. Maybe he knows things about that man and his motives that he would say this to him, to say, don't invite your friends, your family, and your rich neighbors. Invite the poor, the lame, the crippled, the blind. Sometimes it's a challenge to understand some of the things that Jesus has in mind. There was a woman named Sarah Cummins. She lived in Indiana. She and her fiance were busy planning their wedding. Everything was paid for. Everything was planned. They, they had a reception all set up, paid in advance, $30,000 for 175 people. 
a week before the wedding, they decided to they changed their minds. They didn't want to get married after all. Problem was, they couldn't get a refund for what they paid for the reception. So you know what the bride did? With the support of her ex-fiance, who paid $20,000 toward that reception, he supported her decision. She decided, instead of having the family and friends celebrate their non-wedding, she instead invited the homeless, along with 20 veterans. She said, you know, this is a much better way. She didn't want the food to go to waste. So they found 175 people, 20 veterans, the rest were homeless. Some of the businesses in the area contributed to sports jackets that they could wear and dresses that they could wear to be more formal for this occasion in a place that was geared for a formal celebration. And the homeless people that came, they were so, so filled with gratitude because they were having a meal and a celebration that they normally would never have in their lives because nobody wanted to invite them any place. They couldn't contribute anything to anyone. But here, they enjoy the food and the atmosphere, the music and everything. You know, maybe, maybe this is what our Lord has in mind because our Lord himself has a marriage feast in his kingdom of grace in heaven. And who are the ones he's invited to participate? People like you and me who cannot repay him. People who are receivers of his incredible grace and his forgiveness, who are included in the heavenly kingdom and, and the foretaste of the feast to come is what we celebrate here, but there's a feast to come. And what a wonderful thing to know that we have been invited without having to bring a gift. He gives us the robe of righteousness to wear and he provides us with all that we need. I think that is what's behind the words of our Lord for today. Because this is what he has done. He's invited the poor, the poor in spirit. He's invited the blind, the crippled, the lame, the weak. And because of that, you and I have been so richly blessed, all in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. The altar flowers are given by Deborah Brouch in loving memory of her mother, Joan McKevitt, on the occasion of her birthday on August 25th. The eternal light is lit by Richard and Tricia Pohl in memory of Richard's father, Edward Pohl. Also in our prayers, we do have some other prayer requests to share. We pray for the suspense. Okay, here we go. We pray for Kathy and Janice Rolls, Susan Cosgrove at Masonic Hair, for Dawn F. and for Fred. For Richard Haupt, who's receiving physical therapy in Woodbridge. For Arlene Jens, under the doctor's care after being at the emergency room, but she is home under that care. For Janice Gello and her boyfriend in Florida, both with COVID. Karen Persinowski requested a prayer for the military, especially those serving overseas our first responders, that they are kept safe while doing their jobs, for people suffering from mental illness, that they will seek help and healing for our country as we are sorely divided in so many levels. May God bless us and give us peace. We also pray for Beth Peters' uncle Chuck, who is diagnosed with cancer. And please pray for my wife, Sally. She is having surgery this week. Uh, back uh, another surgery dealing with her ankle and she will be spending eight weeks without putting any pressure on that leg so the next couple of months will be 
somewhat challenging for her. So keep her in prayer. With that in mind, the prayers are printed out in your worship service for today. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all the goodness and loving kindness you have bestowed on us, especially for redeeming us through the great sacrifice of the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and for giving us the gift of true repentance, faith, hope, and love by your Holy Spirit. Work in us a right understanding of your will and grant us hearts, lips, and lives that show forth true thanksgiving in all we say and do. Guide and govern your church throughout the world that all may walk in the way of truth and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Bless the congregation here at Zion Lutheran Church as we continue to receive your grace through word and sacraments. Preserve those who travel and help all who call upon you in any need, that they may have patience and trust in the midst of suffering. We pray that you would grant them healing, strength, and relief. Listen to our personal prayers as we speak to you within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Mm -hmm.